Welcome to this ASMR edition of Tales, Tales from Outer from space. space, where we like to take stories from space from around the internet and read it aloud for your entertainment. <laughs> Psych, that's not happening. We're doing this with energy. With energy, I'm telling you. Subscribe, damn it, and all that other YouTube stuff. All the links will be down below, as per usual. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you very much. Story number one. Predator and Prey, written by the third one. How to crap, those guys over there look exactly like predators. Josh urgently whispered to me as we walked into the only bar on some godforsaken asteroid in the middle of a moderately large trade route. Humans were still pretty new to the collective, so seeing new species in busy places like this was still a common experience. Luckily, the universal translators we tradesmen were equipped with usually made such encounters easier. Usually. I looked over to the corner of the room Josh was trying his best to point out to me as inconspicuously as possible. Damn, he really looked like an idiot pointing at them behind his hand like that. Predators, I asked, searching for who he meant. Like the sexual kind or the regular non-sexual hunters. Finally spotting them, I knew exactly what he meant. Oh, you mean like that ancient action movie, Predator, with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I guess they do look a bit similar. It's been a while since I've seen it, to be honest. Not similar, exactly the same. Josh was all wide-eyed and starting to sweat profusely now. He was actually scared of them. They gotta get out of here. Dude, it's just a movie. They're not gonna just tear up your spine out. Unless, of course, you keep being such a fecking idiot and causing some kind of intergalactic incident. I said, trying to avoid the situation that could lead to something stupid happening. Of course, with all very obvious staring and whispering at the doorway of the spa, we detracted some notice by a few of the patrons, including the predators in question. Both so-called predators stood up at their admittedly impressive height and stalked over to us. The other patrons were so eager to move out of their way that a couple tables were literally picked up and scooted to the side to make room for them to walk straight to us. They stopped in front of us, staring us right in the eyes. My hand drifted to my back waistband where my pistol hid, just in case. I glanced over to Josh, who damn near crapped himself and had swept clean through his shirt. It was actually pretty impressive, considering how cool it was in here. The lead alien opened its mandibles, and our universal translator kicked in. Oh my god, Linda! I told you they were humans! We are so honored to meet members of the same species as legendary warrior, Dutch! At this, they both raised their arms into the air and yelled in unison, Dutch! Um... What the fuck, I said. After a few moments, the entire bar was silent. You are humans, yeah? Then you surely know of Dutch, the first warrior to kill one of our kind in single combat in thousand years. It is common knowledge that a video of the heroic fight to the death has been spread on your world as a documentary of the event. Oh, I've got to get a picture with you. The alien, apparently named Linda, said, as she gave a device to her partner and grabbed Josh by the arm, yanking him over roughly to pose for a photo. What the feck kind of name is Linda for a goddamn predator? It is just not right, and Christ, why must they shout every time they say Dutch? Wait, forget that. Do they mean that the movie was real? Wait, so that was real? Josh squeaked, obviously still afraid that Linda would bite his head off any second now despite the fact that, for all intents and purposes, the two predators appear to be... fangirling. Wasn't Dutch a character that Arnold Schwarzenegger played, he managed. Of course it was real! Wait, you... Uh, the first one said, his uh, mandibles putting in slightly as he took a step back. What do you mean, real? You don't treat the recording of those two great warriors as sacred fact, he said, apparently quite shaken and insulted by the realization. You would walk over all the graves of our fallen hunter after such a glorious battle. 
and not even acknowledge the blissful perfection of the Dutch, he growled menacingly. Linda again roughly pushed Josh away from her, joining her partner opposite him. They were both starting to look angry at our interpret disrespect or something, and seemed about to charge or pounce or whatever it is you call it when a huge alien predator jumps on you and beats you to death with your friend's arm. No, wait, hold up, I said, raising my left hand non-threateningly while my right hand snuck to the back of my waistband again. We would never dishonor such a great battle. We just, um, um, I should have no idea how to get out of this one. What the feck kind of situation is even this? Suddenly, the Universal Translator picked up after. I looked around, confused as hell, while still keeping a hand on all faithful. Finally, I saw where the translator was getting it from. It was a barkeeper, a tentacle thing. Three of its tentacles silently waving around in the air above its head, which, according to the UT, was how it laughed. Yeah, I never get tired of fucking with humans. Oh crap, that's great, the tentacle creature laughed. Wiping what looked like a tear from its giant eye. Well done, you two, it said, gesturing at the two aliens in front of us. Here's your payment, it said, as it poured them a couple of drinks each. Josh and I looked at each other as the two creatures also started laughing, clicking their mandibles noisily, as they clapped each other on the back and walked back to the bar. What the feck? Josh and I said in unison. The barkeep, still chuckling, only one tentacle waving this time, called out to us over the din of a lot of alien laughter now filling the bar. Every so often, a human walks in here and mistakes the Thox as some creature from old movie. So, I have an ongoing agreement with any Thok that gets recognized. The Thok frick with the humans. I watch and laugh as the human craps themselves, and then give the fearsome predator free drinks, as payment for the entertainment. I looked over at Josh, who had started walking towards the bar. Jay, where are you going? What? They got us good. Now I really feel like getting drunk, and maybe going back to the ship with an exotic woman, he said, wiggling his eyebrows at me, and as he went and sat next to fucking Linda. Well, I can't believe this, I said incredulously, throwing my hands up in defeat as I turned on my heel and walked out the door. I bid them all farewell with a nice fuck everyone in here, as I went right back to the ship, planning to drink myself into the oblivion in privacy. Hopefully, I could forget that that had actually just happened, and that Josh was currently trying to bred a predator. Jesus Christ, I need a new job. End of story. Story number two. Human minds are like old castles. Written by Guncaster. Human minds are like old castles. Built layers upon layers of primitive, ancient foundations hidden from plain view. The troglodyte, the lizard, the mammal, the monkey, all labeled under the impulsive id. And atop it all, the newborn observer, the ego, the self, the arrogant thing that spits on its ancestry and screams into the cosmos, I am man. And I am above your law. Sequestered in their fortress of civilization and prosperity, hidden behind walls of comfort and consumerism, humans came to believe themselves to be weak. They came to think that they were no more than glorified prey animals, only able to survive thanks to technology and social structures. But when it comes to true conflict, true strife, when man is thrown into the wilderness and left to survive without a lifeline, the ego lets go of the leash just a little bit. It loosens the chokehold on its predecessors, the collective id. The primitive, by clever cave and the skittish mammal, the sheer, unadulterated feral violence of the reptile. Within every man, woman, and child, they locked away four billion years of violence and death. Four billion years of perpetual struggle and murder in the pursuit of dominion over the world that was nothing more than to wipe humans from its surface. They don't have a civilian population. 
Behind every tree, every blade of grass, you will find the muzzle of a rifle, the edge of a sword, the air-ripping scream of a compressed plasma projector. Push them far enough, and they will graft their minds into beastly bodies so they may tear you to shreds the way their ancestors would. For you see, they've dealt their own fangs and claws on purpose, so that they need the tools and technology that they love so much to truly let their incredible violence out, so that there is a degree of separation between themselves and the instruments of their savagery. At least, that's what they were before. In the second millennium, before the Thought Eaters came for them, broke their precious tools, forced them from their home. For half a millennium, the remnants of man drifted through the cosmos, as little more than digital ghosts aboard a reliquary ship. When they settled upon their new home, they were no longer homo sapiens. They made it so they were as one with their tools. So their bodies were no longer anything more than another form of tool. Another weapon. Humans don't have a civilian population. The fire-dyed, metal-skinned monsters you'll see skittering about in the night, ripping apart your men, they're the same children that made a big show of running scared when they made Planetfall. Every monster and old fable, every seemingly supernatural creature you faced in your pointless conquest was merely a human letting go of the reins and seeing what the id would do if provided with a body capable of expressing boundless violence. The seven-armed, skull-faced, screeching thing that slaughtered your battalion, ruined your ship's engines, and left you stranded on a rock in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. You're looking at him. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.